Welcome in Tuesday edition Oxford Exxon podcast. This podcast and all MPW Joe broadcasts presented by Twisted T. More on that in a bit. Lane Kiffin spoke to the media yesterday. We'll uh, discuss his uh, his remarks. We'll talk some NFL. Also a chat with former Ole Miss quarterback, former Saints quarterback John Forcade coming up on the show. He's one of the M Club Hall of Fame inductees for this November, November fourth. The um, week before, or sorry, a couple days before Ole Miss and Texas A&M here in Oxford later in the season. So all that coming up and uh, and more just heads up on that. If you're in the stream, you get to hear the audio. You're going to have a big MPW Digital logo on the screen because it was pre-recorded audio only. But just hang with us. If you listen to the podcast, come back. We'll be back with video. So and if you're listening to podcast form, it's no different. You will not even know that anything is going on that is not its normal self. So all that and more coming up. Today on the Oxford Exxon podcast, Blue Sky location, catering this weekend, everybody in the Grove, let them help you out. A couple pounds of pulled pork, that's a special. A couple slabs of ribs, that's a special. Get some side items, vegetables, great prices on all those things, desserts, the hot case, the lunch specials. Really your go-to stop when you head into town this weekend, or if you're already here, let them have uh, a lunch special waiting on you, Five sixty-nine, dollars a couple sides of bread, any size fountain drink, and more. So, uh all that and the man cave, or man cave, beer cave, not man cave. I use that somewhere else. I don't know, whatever. It's it's been a morning. I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, beer women, cave. Women drink beer too. I know. I'm, I'm, I know. I've had to I reverse my 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 comments. Don't beer be, cave. Don't Thirty four be degrees of goodness. God. I'm sure they got seltzers and all sorts of stuff in the beer cave there. And um, some guys drink seltzers. I just drink See, seltzers. Okay, there you go. There you go. Wear pink. Damnedest thing. It's crazy. I know. I know. It's insane. Oxford Exxon, Highway 6 West, and again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900. I talked to Corey just yesterday. You can, too. Just call him. Tell him what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote, and uh, the rest of it is completely up to you. You can shop that quote around. You can do what I've done, what I recommend that you do, and let's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662 662- 257-1900. Guests join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care to pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to campbellclinicoxford.com or call 901 901- 759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. We will have a uh, post-game show on Saturday following Ole Miss and LSU. It's going to be brought to you by Dead Socks. You check out the exclusive selection of NIL products that directly give back to Ole Miss athletics. Dead Socks, he knows that success on the field is directly impacted by what they contribute off the field. So they want to be a part of the solution, they want you to do it too, and they'll give you something in return. The coolest socks on the planet. You can get individual pairs or sign up for the NIL sock subscription. With the subscription, you not only get membership perks and early access to exclusive collaborations, but you also receive a regular rotation of NIL socks when you want them. That means you'll not only have the freshest socks in town, but you'll be contributing directly to Ole Miss Athletics and helping support the Rebels. Go to deadsoxy.com slash rebels for more. We'll get to Lane Kiffin in a second. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little frazzled this morning. Um, I don't know what's going on. I, I got up and immediately had some stuff to do. I was trying to get the uh, the latest Real Tree podcast out. By the way, it is out. Ben McDonald spoke to him with it for an hour yesterday. We talked a good bit of college baseball, a lot of his oral Oriole memories, including a great Cal Ripken story that I had never heard before. I actually will pull that out for social media later today. Um, been with the Orioles for a good bit of his career, back with them now as a TV analyst. So we'll talk some current MLB with him. I, or we talked some current MLB with him as well. So got that out. Just kind of running late. I somehow slammed my own hand in my car door this morning. Oh. That takes talent. Like, that's a really hard thing to do. Were you looking at your phone? No, I had gotten in and I sat my coffee down and somehow I was – grabbing the car door over here and i guess in one motion i was going to get my seat belt because i was in a hurry i was running a few minutes late and why that mattered i don't know but nonetheless we're not keeping appointments uh not even a little bit yeah i know so somehow when i grabbed the seat belt i went to close the door at the same time and when the door shut my hand was still there and it closed in on my fingers in the door somehow so that hurt i throw the car in reverse and 
the garbage man's coming through and he's grabbing tons of boxes and stuff from across the street. So I was just kind of stuck in my car for about a minute and a half. And look, he was doing his duty. It was completely on me. But because I was already a little hyped up, my blood pressure was starting to rise. Then I got behind another garbage truck headed around toward Belk to get out. Like, I don't know. It just, it just kind of got morning. a little tense. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess it was punctuality based. I don't really know, but I'm just sort of. We, we don't have a deadline to start. I mean, if we don't start until 8 I'm 11, an odd we're duck, okay. okay. I admit it. In the mornings, I I kind of like to get some stuff done, but then have like a few minutes and I'll read some stories and I'll pull up some websites and stuff. And I didn't really get that this morning. And I was like, you know what? Because yeah. I, I sent you the 4K thing. I did some stuff and yeah. I was like, I was kind of mad at myself. I went, you know, had you just done like 25 minutes of this last night? Yeah. Your morning what'd would you be. Do, what'd you do last night? Nothing. That's the point. Like it wasn't even like oh, I mean, I was watching Bengals Rams, but whatever. Like yeah. it was boring. It, it was kind of football. It was game. a bad football game. So no, I was doing nothing, and then I got, I got mad at myself and I went, you know how you like your mornings. You know you're weird. Just prep for that, where that allows that to be the case. And I didn't do it, and now I'm I'm mentally punishing myself, I guess, as we we get going this morning. I'm fine. I get it. I'm that way about Sunday. I have to get I have to get everything organized on Sunday or else the week feels hectic. If I get organized on Sunday, the week doesn't feel as hectic. You do a lot on Sunday because the admin reflects it. You can see all, set the, everything all, all the setup stuff on. That way it's, it's done. And so when I produce it or have it produced and get it sent to me, I just insert and we're done. I'm not having to scramble and go, okay, what, what ad goes here and what goes there. It just makes me feel more organized. Yeah, Grind says, I haven't slammed my hand in the door since middle school. See, I, that's the point. Yes, somehow today I I was that clumsy and uncoordinated that I slammed my own hand in my car door. Um, it's it's kind of hard to do. It is. I mean, it, usually, th- th- physics wise. Usually it's someone's on their phone. They're not paying attention, really. Or they're not paying as much attention as they think they're paying, and they end up doing something stupid, like walking into a car or something like that. So I saw this morning, I and mean, we're going to get to Kiffin in a minute, but... I, I guess not interesting because I guess it's not even surprising. So the international food site taste Atlas had a list of the top 50 breads in the world today. Okay. All right. One U S bread made it. That was it. We only got on there one time. What is a U.S. bread? Well, that's the point. We don't really have a lot of our own creations. Right. Could you figure out what that would be? The U S bread. Yeah. I wouldn't have a clue. It came in at number 34 on the list. Is a New York City bagel. Oh, okay. Yeah, once you're told, you go, oh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, the number one bread in the world is the roti canai. I'm, I know I'm mispronouncing it. I've never had it if, to the best of my knowledge. Um, number three is the first one where I go, yeah, that sounds pretty good, is a butter garlic naan. Okay. I bet that probably plays pretty well. Probably pretty good. And like all your, you know, your Italian stuff, the focaccia and stuff, like that's all on the list. But that's what I was thinking. Like we don't do, like it's not our own creations. We just take their stuff and incorporate it inside our yeah. our entrees. So, yeah, a little bit of culture lesson there. Ciabatta at 49. Oh, that's that low? Yeah. Oh, wow. Ciabatta at 49. Pita at 35. Yeah. Several focaccias actually. Yeah. There's three, four, five on that on that list. You a big bread person? I it, it's like a total weakness for me. I, is I, it really? I, I have to like avoid it. Yeah. Um, in the I, right I, I don't circumstance, even, I don't even like it in the house much. In the right circumstance, but I get annoyed with myself if I feel like I'm doing it simply as a vessel to hold what I actually want. Does that make sense? Sure. That's why, like, I, I'm cool most time eating a hamburger with lettuce around it because I want the meat and the bacon and the cheese and the, the, sure. the other stuff. So uh-huh. like. If it's a really good bun, okay, you can sell me. But if I'm just going and grabbing the bun out of the freezer and defrosting it or something like, nah, I'm just no, I'm, I'm with it you. and I'm all 100%. So, I mean, it's it's kind of like Tom Brady's whole thing is like, hey, I like pizza, but I'm not going to eat shitty pizza. Like, if I'm going to eat it, let's 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 not waste it on something that's not good. Let's make it real. I'm with him on that. Yeah. Yeah. He said he gets he says he doesn't get mad at himself for eating pizza. He gets mad at himself for eating shitty pizza. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the Totino's in the oven is yeah, not no. the way to do that. That's I don't even not remember the, the last time I did that. Yeah, even like Little Caesars and stuff. No offense to you guys, but it's not good. Pizza, pizza. That's just little kid, little kid birthday party. It's easy pizza. Yeah, because it's like 
five bucks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's literally, was it five bucks? Isn't that right? Uh, it's been a minute. I think it's like five or seven bucks still. They did some gimmicky one recently where they put a pretzel crust on their pizza, I saw. I think it was Little Caesars that did that. Oh. Yeah, you're just gimmicking up bad pizza. Still. <laughs> I mean, it's still the Pizza same Hut thing. did a Cheez Its pizza where, like, maybe their crust was Cheez Its. Again. I, look, I'll, I'm asked about the Ryder Cup by Randall on the thread. I, I love the Ryder Cup. It's one of my favorite sporting events. Um, it Is it makes this it, weekend? Yeah, and it okay. makes it really hard to watch with these time zones. So I don't know what I'm doing. Um, What's it going to be like, 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning? So the four balls are going off at 1.30 a.m., and the foursomes are going off at 6.30 a.m. I mean, you're fine there. You're fine at 6.30 my guess you're gonna hate yourself if you get up at 1 30 no watch no 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 i mean even when the when, when the open championship is on on thursday and friday i typically will set an alarm if it's it's different because you can catch the replay it doesn't really matter on fr- thursday and friday and you're still going to get continuous coverage here you've got matches that stop and then matches that start back i'm contemplating a 3 30 alarm oh back nine for saturday I don't know, Thursday and Friday, like Friday, mm-hmm. I think. I think 3.30 is kind of, I mean, look, I get up at 4.30 anyway. I think I think 3.30 is kind of where where I'm at right now on that. Oh, those are Eastern times? Oh, it's 12.30, 5.30? Ooh, I didn't realize that. Ooh, never mind. Now I'm recalculating because that, if it starts at 12.30, 3.30 is not really worth it because I'm only catching the last few holes. I mean, I'll see who wins, but yeah. I don't know. I got to recalibrate, Randall. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. You, you, you kind of hurt me right there. That one hour makes a big difference all of a sudden. Yeah, five thirty still cool. Whatever. That might even be the thing that makes me go, "Hey, just sleep." Is you still get the full second session at five thirty? Like, okay, fine. Like, we'll do this and make it work. So, I'll probably turn that on early Sunday. Is it go still Sunday? Yeah, yeah singles or Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday's a good day. Okay, yeah, one thirty a.m. Eastern to 12 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to recalibrate a little bit. I don't know. We'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, Wayne yesterday spoke to the media. He did, as he typically does on Mondays. As he does every Monday. What he said, what he meant up at rebelgrub.com. Um, I do like this new format. Oh, do it's you? It's growing on me. Why? Because it what he's referring to is a 5.30 p.m. Sunday teleconference where we're supposed to recap the previous game and then try to do more looking ahead on Monday. It's it's forcing media to turn the page. We're not spending all day Monday still talking about Saturday. I liked it. There's a message board thread on up Neil and it it is very accurate you asked two questions yesterday and you got a different tone from Mr. Kiffin than any other response on both questions yesterday um both compliments you ask about wide receiver depth and why their high school kids are not contributing I thought his answer was interesting he because I asked about multiple players he said that is a fair question which meant good question yeah. He said fair question, but in Kiffin vernacular, he meant good well, question. Well, I mean, you could ask that question in a real emotional way. Like, hey, why are, Braylon, well, why are these guys not playing? Yeah, what's, the, yeah. what's the deal? Instead, it was like, you know, how close are they to getting on the field and being a meaningful part of the game plan? Which I thought was fair. And he only mentioned Aiden Williams. He only mentioned Aiden, and I thought that was interesting. And he said, look, he was sick. We got to get him back. We really thought big things. Hasn't happened. Gave a fine yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. But, yeah, he never even said J.J. Henry's name, Braylon Brown's name, yeah. Burke Alter's name. Which tells you that they're not on the forefront of his mind right now. Yeah, he didn't even go, hey, okay, I'm answering this question. Who am I trying to get ready? What does this look like? They're just non-entities. Just not there. Which, again, is, is its own criticism. Sure. Sure. But Aiden's the only one where he went, hey, okay. Well, and and... There are, there are some out there that f- it feels like we're trying to do an autopsy and the, the patient's still very much alive. I, I mean, there's no reason, to, no reason to do this yet with some of this. Again, an Ole Miss win Saturday, and we're having a completely different conversation. Now, an Ole Miss loss on Saturday, and there's a different conversation too. Saturday's big. Yeah. From a com- but as of right now, it's absolutely that Kiffin meme of him, the gif of him calming everybody down where he does the, the yeah. hands up and down and go, hey, chill. And to himself as well. Yeah. You know. He you could tell he clearly had been 
talking to his team about, hey, everybody keeps talking about last year and the screw up, but two years ago, this exact same thing happened. Three and oh, three non con wins, lost to Alabama, and then went on a good run, went 10 and two. Yeah. But last, calm down. Last year, if you want to factor in the Auburn thing, fine. I really don't, for the record. I've talked to too many, play, too many players who said they didn't think the Auburn thing was an issue. Maybe you've talked to players who said something different, but. I think I've talked to like eight players privately about this and asked, was the Kiffin thing a big deal, the Auburn thing? And they're like, no, it was, we lost that game and the goals were gone. Mm -hmm. And you got to turn around and go play. And we had to go up to Fayetteville and it was cold and we weren't particularly focused and they were. And pop. And boom, before yeah. you know it, it's, it is what it is. It happens. To me, the, the, that conversation doesn't happen unless they lose Saturday. If they lose Saturday you suddenly have to ask, hey, you guys probably aren't going to Atlanta. It's going to take a lot, right, for you to get to Atlanta at this point. What motivates you? How do you find motivation moving forward? But right now, I mean, he's able to do the, hey, we we were 3-0 and when we went to Alabama in 2021. Got blown out, frankly. I mean, I think he said it was 35 to nothing at some point that day. Yeah, I didn't recall that, but I do remember it being a blowout. That, that's Kiffin, not me. So if, if it wasn't 35 to nothing, send something, yeah, sounds good. Send something to Lane. Um, you know, and he pointed out that they went 10 and 2. And so that is that is the lesson now. I mean, this week is that we've been here before. The people that are like, so you're facing this adversity. It's not like last year in, like when they lost to Alabama. That was a, it was a dagger. It was. And, and, and frankly, the way that game played out was much more painful than the way the one Saturday played out. Six, seven minutes to go on Saturday, they knew they were losing. It's true, too. A minute to go. The ball was in the air to yeah, win. A minute to go last year, they thought they had a chance because they did. Yeah. I mean, you know, literally there was a ball in the air in the end zone. <laughs> uh, News-wise, I didn't really get much out of yesterday. I'm not missing anything, right? Actual news? I don't think so. I mean, the only news was that he said Trey Harris had surgery. Yeah. And I didn't know that. I, yeah. I mean, sure. It, it is what it is. Yeah. If he had surgery, I'd, I'd just question how much, how much they're getting. It couldn't have been like, it could, it doesn't fit the protocol of any major surgery. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like guessing just a scope. But even so, a week? Well, he missed one week. Yeah, and it's two weeks. I mean, okay, whatever. Yeah. I can analyze that well, all day. I've but. officially hit the point of the season where they're either going to play on Saturday or they're not. The whole, here's what he looked like on Tuesday. Okay. In a walk around. That's, that's, all, we, that's all we see. We see five minutes of guys walking around. And some of them are wearing a different color shirt, which doesn't necessarily mean a damn thing. No. So Corey Franklin was wearing a no contact shirt and he played 60 snaps. <laughs> Teddy Young played a, has worn black the entire season, basically, and has played. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, there was two messages out of Lane Kiffin yesterday. One was that about losing to Alabama two years ago and turning it around or staying on path. And then LSU was really good. That, that, or talented, I guess, would be the word that I would use. He was very much on message with those two things yesterday. And, and that are. was about it. I mean, he's not wrong about LSU being super talented. They, they've they got some freak show talent on their team. I've watched them a bunch this year. They're, they are impressive physically. He did my favorite coach thing, which is he never refers to people by name. It's by number. Um, he referred to Perkins by name. He did refer to Perkins by name. Yeah, knows him. <laughs> Like even neighbors, like how they got four and seven and nine, you know what I mean? It's going through the. I think he referred to neighbors by name too. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wishes he had a Malik neighbors. Yeah. That's a toy that you can, you can play with right there now. That'll, I mean. Look, you don't get to play defensive back in the SEC unless you have some talent. Even at schools that aren't great football programs like Mississippi State and Arkansas. The, the guys that suit up in the starting lineups typically are, have some talent. They were really good high school players as a rule. Neither one of those two teams could guard Malik Neighbors. They just simply couldn't answer for him. 
I'm sure they were trying. I mean, it's not like the coaches at State and Arkansas don't scout, don't watch film. I'm sure they had a plan for him, but the, the plan went up in smoke. I mean, he is he is a dynamic player. So, last thing in this segment, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll keep talking about it. What you make of his offensive line, his running game answer yesterday? Um, again, I know you've already done what he said, what he meant, but for a podcast standpoint, he was asked about the issues up front. Yeah, we got to get better, got to coach better, involve different schemes, different things. Sometimes the running game is interesting. You'll have these games, and all of a sudden they'll pop, and you'll have a bunch of explosive runs. Just got to all go to work and figure out a way. It's not like we're a program that hasn't ever run the ball or hasn't known how to run the ball. It would be really good to get back to that. That coinciding with Quinshawn Judkins yesterday, yeah. the answer to his fir- the first question in his press conference where I don't have it verbatim, but his comment was, you can be the best player in the country, and if the guy in front beside you doesn't do his job, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That was when he said it, because he speaks so softly, Quinshawn does, Yeah, that I didn't think much of it. And then when I transcribed it, I was like, damn. Yeah. Well, that's a lot right there. Was, oof. Maybe he didn't mean it that way. I don't know. That's what he said. What did I think of Lane's answer? The truth. Just the truth. I thought it was transparent. I thought it was we have to do we got to establish it. Somehow, some way, we've got to figure out how to move the football. Um, I saw where Tyler on the was on the message board. Tyler Siski said he thinks they're gonna have to go to some more gap blocking schemes, that they're just not winning one on ones. Which I can tell you from talking to someone on Sunday is what the Alabama yeah, coaching right. staff thought. They they the Alabama coaching staff felt like the game was won at the line of scrimmage. You're good. Um they thought it was one at the line of scrimmage, man on man. Thought the key to their game was that they were able to stop the running game with their front package, and then they were able to pressure Jackson without bringing a lot of stunts and blitzes and things. Mm-hmm. They were able to just win one on ones. Well, that's a problem. It's, it's to me, it's the game Saturday. We're going to talk about neighbors, and we're going to talk about all these guys. It's going to come down to LSU. I mean, Ole Miss's ability to establish enough of a running game to prevent Perkins and Smith and Mingo or Wingo, whatever his name is. I think it's Wingo. Uh, all those cats from getting into third and long and peeling back their ears and just going after Dart. They're, they are elite pass rushers, and they're very disruptive. Yeah, and both sides, pass blocking, run blocking, they have to let that offense open up otherwise – Good luck moving them. I mean, just it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be really hard. Yeah. So because I mean, the only way you do it at that point is the quarterback extends plays with his feet, and Jackson's capable of that. But I don't know that that's his strong suit. Now you can do some design runs to keep them off balance and things like that, but I don't know how many times you want your quarterback getting just walloped. My guess is not many. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll call, come back. Go to 4K, and then we'll uh, hit some NFL, hit some couple other Ole Miss stuff as well. But first, are you ready to elevate your college football game day experience? Check out Twisted Tea, your go-to game day beverage for college football fans. Twisted Tea is unlike any hard beverage you've had before. It's made of real brewed tea and packs a flavorful punch with 5% alcohol, no carbonation, delivering the perfect balance of taste and refreshment that goes down smooth for every game day occasion. No need to settle for the usual. Twisted Tea turns up any occasion, especially when you're cheering for your favorite team, you're tailgating in the stadium, parking lot, or watching at a bar, or hosting friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to elevate your experiences. It complements your love for college football and your passion for creating unforgettable moments. So let's toast to unforgettable game day experiences. Twisted Tea, the drink that fuels fun and celebrates your love for college football. Keep it twisted. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with the challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. I've used therapy as a way to handle stress, clear negative thoughts, mentally relax a little. For me, therapy was a life changer. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable. It's entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey. Switch therapist anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MPW today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash MPW. We're also uh, brought to you uh, by Davey Ferris of Hillco Insurance. 
If you hate losing games, you hate losing players, you hate paying for your insurance, Davey can help. He's partnered with the Grove Collective. He'll be donating 20% of all commissions, 10% of all renewals on both personal and commercial insurance policies. He can serve his customers in all 50 states, and he's dedicated to making sure Ole Miss Athletics succeeds in this era of college sports. Contact Davey Ferris at 214-715-7247 or via email at dferris at hillcoinsurance.com. Are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? Um, are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are some of the questions that can only be answered with a personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego with Sego Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. Whether you meet at his office in Collierville or prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a uh, free discovery meeting and see what he can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. Brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great products and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. And we're brought to you by A-Stock. It's a Nashville-based online retail company with the mission to provide customers the power to name their price. All items start at just $1. That's right. Every item starts at just $1, no matter what the retail value may be. So shop now at astock.bid, that's A-S-T-O-C-K dot B-I-D, or download their app, name your price on thousands of items from big name retailers. Again, that's astock.bid. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's num- America's number one meal kit. Kit. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with HelloFresh. Handles all the meal planning and shopping. Deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard work, and you get the credit. Every wish you can spend more t- less time planning, shopping, and cooking for the family and more time with them. Easy time-saving breakfast and family dinners to kid-approved lunches and snacks. HelloFresh has what it takes to keep everyone, including you, happy ass and satisfied. The recipes are simple, makes it easy, fast to take care of dinner with so much going on. Kids are busy at night, so HelloFresh can help you out with that. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50MPW and then use that code 50MPW for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50MPW with code 50MPW. Now let's jump to, uh, I guess the hotline sort of, but anyway, either way, John Forcade, former Ole Miss quarterback, former Saints quarterback, and M Club inductee this fall here on MPW Digital and the Oxford Exxon Podcast. We should be joined by John Forquet today, kicking off our M Club inductee interviews for uh, this fall here with John in the uh, the Manning Room on campus here in the Star and Center. You broke a few Manning records when you were here, John. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of your legacies, right? Well, thanks for having me. And uh, it's probably one of my legacies. And I don't think a lot of people like the fact that I broke Mr. Uh, Archie Manning's record. But lo and behold, his son Eli came along and took care of me. But except I think he left me one record. I think I still got the most interceptions in one year. <laughs> Maybe that'll maintain for a while there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to go through a little bit of stuff here. But, again, uh, great honor this fall, being an M-Club inductee. When you get the call, you find out. What does it mean to you? You know, people kept asking me about uh, all the awards and accolades you got over the years. And I was just uh, a year year ago, I was in, uh, in, in, uh, inducted into Louisiana Hall of Fame in in, um, in New Orleans. So I was thrilled. And then when I got this phone call, it kind of hit me by surprise because I didn't even know they really was doing this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was a little shocked because, you know, people say, well, it took you 40 something years. And, and, it's the old saying, I got in it, I'm in it, I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm excited. I'm in this group with a lot of players uh, in all sports. It's just not football. But I'm in the group, uh, they can't take that away from me now after you get in it. So I'm thrilled about it. I, I was, it caught me by surprise, but uh, for the people who went out and, and uh, did the hard work for me, I appreciate it. And I uh, hope I don't disappoint that I'm in this big club. Yeah, and you're a guy who likes coming back. I mean, you got a golf round today. You know a lot of guys your classes. You take pride in a lot of that stuff, too. What's it sort of just, you know, when you get to come back and be back and be around for the continuity and, the, you know, the, the camaraderie that's around all the guys you played with? What's that like it, for you? It's, it's strange because we do come here quite a bit for the M-Club golf outing, and we pretty much have uh, anywhere from, like, 16 to 20-something guys from my era uh, and maybe a couple of years before me, a couple of years after me. It's a thrill to see these guys. 
And uh, the M Club does a great job of, of hosting this event for us all to come up here. We get together, like you said, we're going to play golf here prior to the to, to the tournament that's going to be played on, on Saturday. Uh, I'm just thrilled to be able to still see some of these guys because we don't know how much longer, you know, and, and it's a shame to say that, but we have lost some, some players over the years. Uh, but it's to be involvement to have these guys, and I wish I could have them all here for when the final day that they induct me and they go in on, on, on the fourth for the A&M game. I would love to have my whole team here. I know it won't happen, but there'll be a few that will be here that uh, live locally that, that I'm inviting to come. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm going to ask you to retell a story you've probably told 7,000 times. State game, being your career. The uh, But I want to start even went back. You yeah. th- think it's an interception. Think you get the penalty. Take me through that. What's going through the head as you're driving there, you get the ball, 13 seconds left, 25 yards to go. Well, it's – it's it, nobody – I don't know if nobody knows this, but, you know, Mississippi State kicked the field goal on third down. It was 30-something seconds left of the game. They kicked it on third down. They took the lead. They were up by three. And I'm on the sideline. I'm like, wow, they, they're giving me an opportunity. Uh, that's all I can ask for. And we, we threw the ball. We got down there. Uh, you had 13 seconds left. Um, threw the ball in the end zone. In my eyes, it's pass interference. <laughs> but after looking at the replay, I wasn't too sure. But we got the call. You know, maybe it's home cooking. They put it at the one-yard line. And other people don't realize this. A lot of people don't know this. There was another penalty on the play because Mississippi State got mad and they kicked the football. Then they moved it to the half yard line. So we called timeout, went to the sideline, and there was no doubt they, I don't care what play they were calling, I'm carrying the football. I'm going to go off the end. I knew what play we were running. They knew what play we were running, 38 counter goal line option. Uh, I still can remember the play. We line up in the wrong formation. So here I am looking at this situation. We don't have a tight end on the left side. I don't have time. The clock's running. We don't have time out. I had to run the play the way it was. When I did the spin around, faked the hammerhead Thomas went up over the top. I walked around him. You knew doggone well I wasn't tossing the ball to him. But if you look at the defensive end for the Mississippi State, if he would have ran after me, he probably would have got me. I don't think he'd have gotten me forward in the end zone, but he went and tackled hammerhead. And I walked into the end zone and it was exciting knowing that that was the last play of my college career, beating my arch rival. But it all goes back. Mississippi State don't kick on third down. Mm-hmm. They win the game by running some clock out, kicking it on fourth down. They didn't do that. So they were trying to make sure in case they fumbled snap or anything, they had another opportunity yes, at that that's, point. That's, you know, that, old, that old analytics type yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. that don't win your football games. You know, when's the last guy that was an analytic guy who got fired? We don't know anything about that, but – Back in those days, I was shocked that it, it happened, but they gave me an opportunity with the football in my hand. What are those historic images you hold up the football? Do you even realize you're doing it as you cross the end zone? Do you know sort of that next 10, 15 seconds, what's going through your head? I just I just knew that when we scored, that the game was over. And and what else to do? You know, put the ball on the ground. They, 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 they can penalize me all they want. Can't take it away from me. Um, the funny part about it, I had to listen to this for years. They were saying that I ran down the sideline, giving a high leg kick, giving number one sign to the Mississippi State bench. Uh-huh. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I was in the middle of the field getting jumped on by my teammates, and one of my teammates just happened to be running down the sideline. I'm going to give him some prep here. It was Tony Dalton, who was giving a high leg, knee lift, with like shooting like, I'm number one, I'm number one. <laughs> And, but everybody in Mississippi State believes it was me, and I've always told people, the eye in the sky never lies. I was not the guy on the sideline, but I was thrilled. What more should I have done? You know, you score, you, you stand there, you celebrate, and you had to put the ball over my head. That didn't, didn't mean anything different. It was just that we won the game. I'm sure everybody, I had the ball in the end zone. The game's over. I come out of high school. You are highly recruited, a lot of different options and stuff. Take me through that from an Ole Miss process. When did you sort of hear from them, and how did that end up being uh, an Ole Miss Rebel? People have asked that many years. Um, I wanted to go, and I was on the verge of going to Alabama. Uh, I went to my recruiting trip there at Alabama. Bear Bryant wasn't there that weekend. He was in Vegas. I'm at my recruiting in Alabama. Uh, the offensive coordinator at the time was Hal Mummy, um, and um, – he told me I would not be playing quarterback for them until I was a junior. So I'm thinking, wow, you know, I'm, you're recruiting me and you tell me I won't play until I'm a junior. 
So I left that day, Bear Bryant called me that, that evening and wanted to know how my trip went. I told him what happened and all of a sudden he went nuts on the other end of the phone. I don't know if he had a few cocktails, uh, but uh, he was he was screaming into the phone, not at me, but at Coach Howe for, for telling me that I won't play until I was a junior. Okay, that was all said and done. So then my next big recruit was LSU. Sure. Charlie McClendon came into my high school. They had already signed three kids from my roster to their school, and he didn't know who they were. And they were sitting right there because he was talking to his um, offensive line coach who was recruiting me, Barry Wilson. And I had mentioned to Barry Wilson prior to that, like, Coach Wilson, don't tell me I'm not going to play until I'm a junior. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get me. Well, he's sitting around there, and Coach McClendon asked, uh, Barry Wilson about the three guys. Who were they? And he didn't even know who they were. And so we got into a little conversation. They were promoting, doing what they got to do for LSU. Sure enough, Coach McClendon said, well, you won't play because we have Steve Emsminger and David Woodley. You wouldn't probably play till you're a junior. And I can just see Coach Wilson tripping and falling out of his chair. And it was all done, over with, everybody left. And Coach Wilson came up to me and says, we're not getting you, are we? I said, Coach, I don't think so at the moment, but we'll still see well, then Ole Miss came about with Steve Sloan. Mm -hmm. This was in December. Uh, David Lee recruited me, who was the offensive uh, quarterback coach at the time, and he spent almost a month in, in Gretna, New Orleans area, stayed at a hotel, and he was giving me his, you know, his speech. And it came down to this. He chatted with me, talked about everything, and I said, Coach, y'all run the same thing I did in high school. I like what Coach Sloan has to offer. I see everything. But if you tell me... I won't play until I'm a junior. I'm not coming to Ole Miss. And kidding aside, he said, well, how about if I tell you you'll play as a freshman? Can you put that in writing? And he, which you couldn't. But I liked him. I, you know, he was not BSing me, and he never said that. Um, and it was easy for me to adapt to go there. But, look, I would have gone to Alabama if they wouldn't have said that. Uh, LSU had the opportunity to get me, too, after Alabama did and I had told them, don't tell them I'm not going to play. They could have just said, hey, we'll give you an opportunity to play as a freshman. If I get there, they, they already have me because mm -hmm. I can't do anything about it. But it didn't happen. Uh, I like I Coach Sloan at the time, uh, Coach Lee, the same offense that it ran, played. It, it was called the same number system at, at me in high school. So it made it easy for me to adapt coming here as a freshman. Were you an LSU fan growing up? No, I wasn't. I followed him. I wasn't really a college Fan growing up, uh, you know, Tulane was there, LSU was there. Uh, I knew a bunch of other schools. I was recruited pretty heavily. Uh, I can go on and on and on. I still have, as today, I can go in my garage. I have letters mm -hmm. from 200 schools at least. Uh, there were about 16 or 18 of them that really wanted me really bad. And so I, you had to make a decision. I mean, it's what are you going to do? You can't satisfy all the 199. You got to pick one. But uh, no, I wasn't a big LSU fan. I was a college football fan, and that would have been Sloan's first year, right? He had come Sloan's after Cooper at that point, Correct. so it was you were everybody sort of been new together. At that yes, point. he they they announced him in December, and um, I didn't sign until after because really I kind of wanted to get that I was getting a truck for Mardi Gras, okay. and a guy from LSU was hooking me up with a big all truck, right, all right. so I had to wait till after I got that before I announced. Did you know Cooper at all before that, or they kind of recruit you? The, did you know the former previous staff? At I did all? not. They were not even. They, they didn't recruit me at all. Really, they, they didn't hear from Ole Miss at all until. Uh, let me back up down. Sure. Ole Miss played Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, and I went there on my own, nothing to do with you know the, the Ole Miss or you know. So I had two of my high school coaches took me to go up there just to watch the football game. And that's what I remember. First time ever seeing Ole Miss, other than watching TV. And I said, you know, okay, well, that looks pretty, you know, pretty cool. I like the uniforms, blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. Nothing, never met a coach at all. Never met Cooper, never met anybody. And then when Sloan came in, that's when I met him. Being, as, you know, growing up there, sitting right now, and being that close to, to New Orleans and Baton Rouge, what was it like playing at Tulane and L at LSU throughout your career? Well, you know, I played in the uh, high school all-star game in Baton Rouge with an Ole Miss Rebel helmet on. Oh, that didn't go over well with a lot of yeah, people yeah, there yeah. in Baton Rouge. But, look, it, it's all competition. I had a lot of friends that went to LSU, a lot of friends that went to Tulane. Uh, I liked the coaches at Tulane. I liked everything. It was just that it wasn't for me. Uh, they they weren't, you know, wasn't going to – I didn't see myself playing there. Mm -hmm. Rock Hannes was their quarterback. 
you know, the LSU scenario, I knew David uh, Emsminger, and Steve Emsminger and David Woodley was there. I uh, probably wasn't going to play the year, but you just, you know, things led to one thing after another. And listen, the NIL thing they got nowadays was a little bit different there. It was all under the table type stuff. And I was offered a lot of stuff from a lot of schools, and I had to weigh that out as well. Uh, but 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 being around, I used to go to a lot of Tulane football games at Tulane Stadium. I went to a couple of LSU. I didn't live in Baton Rouge, but, you know, we kind of went around. But all you heard, LSU Tulane, LSU Tulane. But I, I just – Wanted to get away far enough, but be so close. And five and a half hours ride is, is not that far for us. So I was doing a little prep, looking around, different things. Did you really cut a cast off to play against sure Tulane did. that day? You know, we were playing a, a, I had an intramural softball game. It was it was the fraternity guys versus the athletes. We were here in the summertime in July. That doesn't feel fair, athletes against fraternity guys. It feels like you, you got an advantage there. Well, we, we you thought we might have. Okay. But, uh, there, right. was, there was some good frat boys that were playing – that were, they were good athletes, right. and uh, I broke my finger that way. They, they, that day, uh, I slipped on home plate, hit a base hit in left field. I was running the first, it started to rain. I slipped on home plate. My finger jammed to the ground, broke it, put me in the hospital. Yes, we were at uh, the Hilton Riverside in New Orleans. Know it? Yeah, yeah. Um, had a butter knife in the room. I cut my cast off. Showed up at the stadium. And at the stadium, they all looked at me like, what are you doing? Leroy Mullins wasn't a happy camper. Uh, I said, I wanted to play. Coach Sloan and David Lee came in and like looked at me in the training room like, what's, what's the scenario? I said, Coach, I want to play. I feel like I can play. Well, can you throw? So I went out in, 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 a, in a corridor and, and threw some balls. And they were like, wow, okay. But I still had the pins in my hand. So we had to develop some form of way to protect that. Well, when the officials came in, they checked my hand and everything. They, they had this big padded ordeal on there, and the pins wasn't showing. But um, as that close to the game, they put a, a steel plate into this offensive lineman's blocking pad, and they trimmed it out, fixed it up, and they mm -hmm. covered my pins on the side with the plate. They bent it, did everything, taped it up, unless my palm was available. But everything from here... On my side of my, my hand, you can still see the scar. Oh, yeah. Side of my hand, all oh, it had a plate right here. And so, yeah, I went in and played. Played, in, played against Tulane. And so, um, we were leading. We were winning, leading the game. And then they took the lead. And then I get hit and separate my shoulder. Come out the game, Kelly Powell goes in, throws a, a pass that Breck Tyler caught for the winning score. And we beat Tulane. And so, the next day, I had to get my pin removed. That was a shocker to do. Pulling them out with a pair of flies. Are, are we nervous when we got to go tell David Lee and Steve Sloan we've broken a finger play in a softball game as opposed to something football related? Is that, is, is, know, is that, is that a hard conversation? You know what's strange is um, when, when Leroy met me at the hospital, they said, well, do you want anybody to know you're here? I'm like, I don't know. How you want me to answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was a private type thing. But Leroy said, no. They had to put a fake name, go under. And the coach came to me and, no, they – it was strange that I was expecting a little more, like, chewing me out for that. But they knew it was all, because all the athletes were out there. We we had played softball the whole summer, as, you know, as, and until it came down to that game, they came in wide. Nobody complained. It, I mean, it happened. It was an accident, and I didn't plan on it. But, hey, you know, I could have been redshirted, but I really wanted to play. And, and when I cut the cast off, they said, let's go play. Finish up at Ole Miss in 81, undrafted, make stops, arena, USFL with the showboats, Canadian, finally get with, uh, with with the NFL, end up at the Saints later. When you when you finish at Ole Miss, is it just keep playing football because that's what you know and that's what you do? What was sort of in your head on what's going on after that 81 season? Well, they were, you know, I, I wanted to continue to keep playing football. Uh, and I knew they had the Canadian Football League and the NFL. The USFL didn't start till a year after I went to Canadian Football League. And so I had to make the decision. I, I just want to keep playing. I wanted the opportunity. Uh, didn't, didn't didn't get drafted uh, for whatever reason. It's it's old water under the bridge. We're going to move on. So uh, it was strange as soon as the draft was over. And I had like six NFL teams calling, beating on my door here in Oxford, wanting to sign me. Uh, the better deal for me was in the Canadian Football League, financially for one. And and I thought you know I get a better opportunity there to to, to develop. Maybe you know 
get better as, as, as a quarterback, as a player, as a passer. Um, that didn't pan out. It didn't pan out. I could have had. I could have signed a bigger contract with Winnipeg. They wanted me. They traded for me from uh, British Columbia. But I wanted to come back home because the USFL was, was calling and talking, and my agent said, let's go try the USFL. Probably should have never done it. Should have stayed in, in the CFL, and uh, I didn't. So it's over and done with. But when I got that opportunity to uh, get through with the football part, I didn't know what I was going to do after it didn't work out for me. Warner offer called me and said, John, you got one semester left. Get your butt back up here. It's springtime. I will make sure you get everything picked. And I said, sure, everything was taken care of. Okay, what am I going to do? There's no spring football. I'm not playing. Bingo. I come back. I wrote a letter to Jim Fakes. Mm-hmm. And I, I begged, borrowed, whatever it needed to be. I said, Mr. Finks, I'll pay you to come down here and work out. And I will also bring this on the table to you. If you decide you want me and you like me, I'll play for free. And it was about a week later, 10 days later, I came back to Ole Miss, finished up. You know, I, was, I drove down, came back. And about a week or so later, 10 days, I think it was in that time span, I got a letter stating, hey, we're going to sign you to a contract. And oh, by the way, John, remember you said you'll play for free? So yes, sir. He said, but I can't do that. But we have to give you a con. But that's how I got to play with the Saints, uh, sign with the Saints. What does that mean to you? I mean, you get that call, you get the thing when you well up for the first game and you dress in that uniform after everything. And grow- no, I mean, I, what, what, how do you put it in words? Well, it, 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 I was shocked. I wanted to pinch myself every second and make yeah. sure that I am. I'm the guy sitting in the dome. That's me. This is John Forky. I made it. Um, but it was a long way around how I made it. When they signed me in 86, they brought me to camp. Uh, I had a really good training camp, but then they let me go because it was Bobby Bear, Richard Todd, and mm-hmm. Dave Wilson on the team. Like, wow. You know, and here I am outshining them in, you know, in, in fall ball or, or spring ball, whatever it may be. Training camp, they released me. 87 came around, strike season hit. Mr. Finks got back in touch with me. I was really not a happy camper because – I thought I should have made the club in 86, which was not his choice. It was Jim Moore's choice of releasing me. And I told him, nope, I'm going to play. I'm going to go sign with the uh, – at the time it was the Raiders. Right? So I'm going to the Raiders the strike season because I had a couple of Canadian football administration guys who knew me who were out there with L.A. or Oakland and said, come out here. We will give you a shot. Al Davis will give you a chance. And I'm going to the airport. Things kind of got in touch with me uh, through my agent and – Convince me to give me a shot to play, and I will be starting in the strike season, and that's when it hit right there. After the strike game, first game against the Rams, uh, they ended up a couple more games, and then when it was all over, it, they expanded the roster. We kept like eight guys on the roster from the strike team, and that's how it all began. I, I stayed around four years with them, and um, tore up my rotator cuff and my elbow, and kind of ended my career. Highlight the end of the '89 year, had those several games in a row. Really kind of right. finished the year on a big note there. I, that was a good time going into the 19. Uh, I was going to start the Detroit game prior to it, but uh, I was I had back spats. Something happened in the pregame warm, so A Bear played. I came in the second half, finished up the game. Um, we didn't win, but the next three weeks I was a starter. Yes, '89 Buffalo and in, in, you know zero degree weather and snow. We beat them, knocked them out of winning the division title. Following week, Monday Night Football, Philadelphia Eagles, we beat them and knocked them from uh, winning the division title as well. And then last but not least, we took on the Colts. We beat the Colts and knocked them clearly out of the playoffs. So things were going well for me. Start the 1990 season prior to the game, uh, coming back from London, my girlfriend at the time, um, Christine Frischert, she ended up having a uh, procedure done uh, unexpectedly uh, heart surgery, and she ended up dying okay. prior to uh, that season. So I had to go through the 1990 season knowing that I just lost her. And I'm, I'm going to play pro football, and I'm a starting quarterback. Things didn't go well. Uh, they brought Steve Walsh in, and the rest was history. They made a decision to release me the following year. Football's been your life. You move up from there and find anywhere to play and coach, management, which, whatever you can do. What does it just sort of meant? to you the last 30 years, just being involved at whatever level you have? Well, the, the, the involvement of me being playing was the fact that I'm a competitor yeah. person, competitiveness. I'm going to go up against anybody. I feel like I'm as good as anybody. Let's do the things. And then as the age caught up with me, I had to decide, you know, it's, it's you know, injuries caught up too. And 
like I said, I had 31 surgeries. And then I had to realize, you know what, let me get back to these guys. And I got more into the coaching, the management part in arena football. And granted, it wasn't college, it wasn't pros, but it was still a, a sport that I liked being involved in. It was less than being on a, on a professional level. This was a different professional indoor game. I enjoyed it. Uh, I got to meet a lot of kids. And I, and, I, and I ended up taking some guys that played for me and got them into some NFL camps, the CFL, the USFL, I mean, excuse me, the, the XFL back then. And so I was thrilled that to give back and show people, you know, the work with these kids, I call them kids, but th these young adults who want to possibly get to the next level and, and play. And I was trying to, hey, I'm going to show you what not to do and what to do. You, you, you kind of you, you mentioned that. And, I mean, you, you have 31 surgeries. You move around pretty good. What would you have been like if – it was today. I mean, if it wasn't running the beer, how, how would you have, how would you have been a quarterback and a little more of the spread kind of I'll, stuff? I'll say this. Um, nothing against Tim Tebow. Okay. Nothing against Johnny Manziel, which I was Johnny football before he was. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in, in all honesty, if I was playing this style of play yeah, yeah. nowadays with the run, pass, option, shotgun, oh, I wouldn't have 31 surgeries. Um, they don't hit the quarterback as much these days. Uh, as they did back when we played the Veers football. I mean, look, I ran a lot in high school and I ran a lot in college. Uh, that's a lot of beating 15, 16 times a game. Because it's an offense ball. set up where you could hit every play no matter what. Right, no matter. You hand the ball off, you can get hit. You toss the ball to the running back, you're going to get hit or you pitch it. So we didn't throw as much back then. But in, in the style of play that these guys play nowadays, my nephew played for Nichols, Chase. He started all four years. Never missed a game. Doesn't have any injuries. I'm thinking, wow. Just think if I'd have played in that yeah, style yeah, of yeah. offense, it's a lot different than what we did back in the day. But you know, all times have changed, and we all know that. And next ten years from now, it might be totally something different. But I, I could have played it for a long period of time, and, and, and probably you know set some records and did some things on the college level, and, and, and maybe we would have done differently. But it's a different style. We had wishbone back in the day. Mm -hmm. You didn't veer to wishbone. You didn't run much other. Have you enjoyed kind of being the analyst, talking head, TV, radio, that kind of thing? I've been doing that, shoot, 14 to 15 years now between the television part, and I, and I do a lot with the radio. Um, driving up here today, um, I had a, a long conversation with Sean Salisbury. Uh, we're going to do something, you know, some more stuff for, for the NFL games. they got some stuff coming up. So, yes, anytime I get an opportunity to do that, I love to analyze and not saying I'm right, not saying I'm wrong about it. I just give my opinion of things, um, but it's so much fun, uh, you know, two or three hours on the air and, and doing some podcast work and things, but it keeps me involved in the sports world and something I've always enjoyed doing is football. What's it been like just following Ole Miss in this era as a fan and kind of here recently? Look, it's been an up and down roller coaster for the last 15, 20 years. We all know that. It's it, it's it's like that in all, all college teams, but I come up as much as I can, you know, three or four games a year I try to make. Uh, I watch uh, Lane Kiffin's style of plays different than when David Cutcliffe was sure. here with, with Eli. Uh, you can go on and on. I, I enjoy watching Hugh Freeze's style. I just enjoy that, except I don't get into what Lane's thinking sometimes when he's on his eight-yard line and he's going for it, things of that nature. I got to comment on that sometimes on TV and radio. But, you know, times have changed, like I said. There's, you know, there's yeah. analytics – it wouldn't have flown back in my days when I was playing, but I enjoy watching. It's a different style of game. Even the fans or former players, we have to adapt to it. You know, you can't kids sit around and go, well, we'd have done this back. It's a lot different. And honestly, I like the way it is played like that, except just try to get as many plays as you can. It, it, I don't realize it, but it wears out on your alignment a lot. What's the, what's the, what's the hope for a golf score today? When he, what, are we, what are we hoping to break? <laughs> You know, I've been many years being the two handicapper, and it shot up the other day when I was in Phoenix. My little golf out in there said, What are you playing at? I went 12. <laughs> and they're like, You're sandbagging already, but they knew the situation. Uh, I didn't look, you know, if I can break 82 today, okay. I'll be happy. But it's not about breaking 82, it's about winning the money from somebody else. I get it. Higher than that. It's the little wolf game, the little personal jab at each other. Trust me, there's a lot of, you know, talking going on out here. Well, congratulations. I really uh, appreciate it, and we'll see you at the ceremony here in November. I appreciate you doing this interview. Thank you.
Thanks to John Forcade for his time there on the podcast. We'll get back to a little more on this talk in a second. First, I'll tell you about Prime Shrimp. PromShrimp.com. Seven different flavors available for you. Everything from their full meals, full meals in a bag, the garlic herb butter, the French Quarter Alfredo. I mean, great protein, lunch, salad, dinner options, including the New Orleans style barbecue, the signature, and much more. So you can uh, get a combination of pouches or you just get a lot of your favorites, and we're going to help you out. They're going to live them straight to your door and use code RG for 25% off. You buy five pouches or more. That's five pouches or more with code RG with PrimeShrimp.com. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, sustained energy, immune system support, and I hate taking pills. I drink AG1 every morning. I love knowing I'm doing something good for my body, giving my body the nutrition it craves, covering my nutritional bases. Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash MPW. That's athleticgreens.com slash MPW. Check it out. We're also brought to you by the College Corner. The College Corner uh, is in Oxford now. It's right off of uh, Sisk in the Oxford Commons. They also have two locations in the uh, Jackson area. So if you're coming up this weekend for the LSU game, stop by the College Corner. They'll get you in and out, ready for the Grove in no time. More than uh, 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear. It's collegecornerstore.com. Also brought to you by Game Changer Patches. They're the only two-patch system available in the market to stop hangovers before they start. The warm-up patch used before or while you drink. The overtime patch used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients are going to keep you in the game or ready for your next play. It's GameChangerPatch.com. Promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. And we're brought to you by Pinnacle. Pinnacle, home to the Pinnacle 401k advisory services team. Contact them today. And they'll give you a complimentary, no obligation, benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. It is mypinwealth.com, M-Y-P-I-N-N wealth.com. Fall is here, gentlemen. It's time to get busy, about to get busy during the holidays. Don't let that stop you from sticking to your habits and being the best version of yourself. That's why our friends at Caldera Lab come in. The guys are the best in the business in the skincare game with an easy routine. Keep your face looking pretty no matter your schedule. Plus, it's, what's a better gift than clear skin? Join the other 100,000 men who trust Caldera Lab to show your best self and first impressions this fall, and it's a great gift. Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products, and the regimen leads off their product lineup. It is a three-step process, the clean slate, the base layer, and the good. The clean slate starts and ends your day, leaves all skin types refreshed. The base layer is your daily moisturizer to hydrate your skin and jumpstart your day full of confidence. And then the good is your go-to multifunctional serum at night to help your skin look tighter and smoother. All it is is one minute mornings and then at night is all it takes to reduce your wrinkles, fine lines, and signs of aging. So just for our audience, this exclusive deal, you're not beating this offer. Use MPW at CalderaLab.com. 20% off right now. Get 20% off with code MPW at CalderaLab to make an unforgettable first impression with your best gift this holiday season. Again, thanks to uh, John for uh, joining us again, the uh, M Club Hall of Fame. Ceremony is November 2nd. That's a Thursday before Texas A&M. Um, another interview style ceremony there between the uh, inductees and myself. 662-915-1876 is the phone number to get your tickets again. Uh, 662-915-1876 is the, uh, is the number. You were just mentioning yesterday, uh, a second ago when we were uh, waiting for the Forcade interview to end. Um, Sam Pittman jumping on the social media situation yesterday as well. Yeah, you hear more and more coaches kind of talking about it. Um, we talked better help earlier. He was talking about how they have several players in counseling. They push for it. He canceled his Twitter account. I think he's being pressured to bring it back for recruiting purposes. But Oh, did he get rid of it? Yeah, okay. yeah, he got off Twitter. Um, yeah, he was talking about how after their loss to BYU, several players were like down, and he was asking them you know, if they're okay or whatever, and they were talking about social media. I mean, I, this isn't news to you. Twitter, X, or whatever we call it is a mean place. Um, 
I just thought it was interesting that you have a SEC head coach saying, basically what he was saying is if you criticize his coaching, he's cool with that. He gets it. But when you go personal, you know, people talk about his appearance and stuff like that. He can handle it, I think. I think this point is that when you do that with the kids, it's sort of dovetails on what Kiffin was saying on, I guess it was Sunday, that the players, like like the adults, frankly, walk around with phones in their hands all day long. They're constantly getting feedback. And Pittman's point was when he was younger, and I don't know how old Sam is, late 50s, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, when he was that age, you didn't get that. You might got 61. Yeah, so he's he was born in 62, 63. He didn't grow up with that. When he played, they might yell at you coming off the field, right? They might boo you. But that was it. Maybe a newspaper guy would write something bad about you. Probably not. But you certainly didn't deal with social media. Can you imagine social media? And you have thousands of people telling you how much you suck. At some point, you maybe start believing that, hey, I really suck. It is funny, and it's the most salient point that Kiffin had that I really agree with when he said is, that, yeah, you can be booed and yelled at by all the fans in the stands, and they go, hey, you blah, 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 and you're going to go, okay, great, whatever. You might even play around with them. But they, the exact same person does it on your phone 30 minutes later, and it's, oh, it, it's a weird mental thing because, mm -hmm. frankly, when he's doing it at you in the stadium, you see his face. There's a person to it. This is like this anonymity bullcrap. Like, it's just how our consciences mess with that is really fascinating to me. Because, I mean, I think he's right. You see it on your phone and go, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, sure. oh, God. But then 20,000 sure. people yelling it at you go, ah, whatever. Okay, sweet. Anonymous guy calls you fat and it gets to you. Yeah. There's a post, there's a picture of you on social media. And th these are things that have happened to me. And, oh, look at your man boobs. And you become very conscious of, like, just that. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one anonymous account on Twitter that just wears me out most most days. And I, I mean, my life about it. But, yeah, yeah. I, I could get how if there's a bunch of them and you're just bombarded yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And, and if you were susceptible <clears throat> to that. He was talking specifically about his punter, Pittman was. Mm -hmm. Against BYU, they had a, a – he's an Australian kid. He missed him miss kicked the ball it only went 10 yards and you know it was pivotal in the football game but the kid took a lot of the criticism to heart i mean it, it upset him and people start taking shots at his appearance and the way he looks and stuff like that and yeah i, I can see how that would be debilitating for some people some people are wired differently some people are wired in a way where that no, nothing phases them and some people are wired in a way where everything can phase them. And just because you play football doesn't mean that mentally you're tougher or stronger than other people. It just doesn't. That's been proven. It's the cousin to how you have to coach kids differently. Some kids can take you yelling and screaming and all over them. And frankly, they kind of need that to get their juices flowing and to get them back in gear. And then some you yell out like that and they just wilt in front of your face. Corey Reamer, I don't know if you remember this, last week on the um, Alabama pregame thing that I did, I asked him what it was like to play for Saban because he played for Saban a long time ago, a different Nick Saban. And he said that when his career was over that Nick Saban told him, sometimes I yelled at you because the person I wanted to yell at, I couldn't yell at him. So I had to yell at you because it just – He would get the message and – You were able to somehow filter the noise and just get the, the words – and some guys couldn't do that, so I'd yell at you and get the message to another player, which shows kind of pretty smart. Pretty, I mean, shows you that Saban's been playing chess for a while. Yeah, you got a pitcher who's really struggling. You get out the mound, you start yelling at the catcher. Yeah, I'm going at just yeah, eh. yeah. I'm talking to him. But I thought that was interesting. There's just a lot there. It's a weird sidebar to the season. I don't know. Just social media in general, all the mm -hmm. neon stuff, all the whatever. Like we're just we're inundated in this. Did you see the video Oregon put out this morning? No, what is it? Oh, so Oregon put out a five minute video. Five minutes? Yeah, it's okay. kind of their equivalent of like the season or okay. whatever, right? And um, they show 
Oregon's Friday night meeting sure. where Lanning's talking and stuff. But then when the Colorado guys got on the field in pregame, they're really talking. Sanders' kid, not Shadur, but the uh, Shiloh, Shiloh, I think. Shiloh, yeah. He's really talking crap. And the, I think the safety or the tight end, one of the others, uh, you know, scraping at the, the O with his cleats. And they're just talking a lot right into the Oregon pregame cameras. And his message was, we're going to talk with our pads. Don't respond to them. And, and there was a lot of chippiness from Colorado that didn't get answered by Oregon and then until the game started. Well, it was, was kind of like this deal yesterday. There's this huge push like by a lot of media members to go, well, you know, Dion only talks about his team positive. It's like, oh, shut up. Yes. Like, come on. Stop. You can't. And it's like, you know, we're not even really mad at Dion. We're mad at you idiots. You've made this into the spectacle that it is. Yes. It's a media creation. Yes, 100%. You allowed, because he's great for your business, mm -hmm. Dion to manipulate this. And Dan Lanning said as much. He goes, you know, look, all that game got all that attention because of Dion. He goes, yeah, sure. that's good. It's good for college football. It's, make, it's, it's a bigger storyline. Yeah. More people are paying attention. Lanning responding is good for college football. College football needs to be a circus. Yeah. It's one of the things we love about college football is it's a circus. Yeah. You got the three rings and the Barnum and Bailey and the whole deal. Yeah. Dion's accomplished that. What's coming is L's. And when the L's come, people go, well, well, like, I love this one. Dan Lanning got help from other coaches. Okay, first of all, coaches all talk to each other. Every game, every coach, every week. They all have networks. They all have friends. Every they week. all help each other. Secondly, Dan Lanning didn't need any help. <laughs> I mean, stop. I'm curious to see what it looks like in, like, three weeks because – the media has actually taken away what should have been just a pretty good story. Dion's a much like they're better. Oh, much they're, better. They're, they're good. Yeah, they're fine. Landing said he's building something there. Six, that's and six seven and five, yeah, whatever sure. they end up, it's cool. But I mean, my God. Yeah. After three weeks, yours winning the Heisman. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not even close to winning the Heisman. He's not the best quarterback on the field on Saturday. He, he's not one of the five best quarterbacks in his conference. No, just stop. But he's he's fine. That doesn't mean no, he's that, good. Fine. that, that yeah, doesn't yeah. mean that he sucks. He is a division just, one quarterback. Yeah, I mean, and and he's a legitimate division one quarterback. He's proven Auburn that. would love to have him. Oh, tomorrow. Just relax. Yeah, just. I feel just not good at that anymore. We we're weird. It's, I don't even know what it is. It's just we're we're strange. It's one of the reasons I I kind of enjoy doing the what he said, what he meant thing, because I get to go back and like listen, listen slash read what was said and what was asked. And uh, yesterday, Kiffin got the same Alabama question twice. The literal same question. I mean, he could have just snapped at that moment. I, I actually kind of admired his. He completely just. He just kind of half answered it. He gave it the boring answer which is because that's what it deserved. What it deserved was, I already asked that. He, he asked that. He took pity on somebody ago. who's not there every day. But not paying attention. Well, no, I know, but. You're up in the, pay that's attention. That's a different answer if depending on who asked the question. Like sometimes the questions, the, the thing gets so bad to start that I kind of just drift off. And then I don't ask a question because I realize that I haven't been listening. Maybe that got asked. And so I'll just have to. Wait for another. I day. will absolutely have some fear sometimes going. I'm going to ask this, and I'm not a hundred percent sure it hasn't been that. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah. Ah. yeah. But no, that's it's a very much a coach thing to respond to the level that you expect something out of the reporter. And if you don't know the person, a lot of times you'll answer it, even if yeah. it's really stupid. Because it's like, why am I yelling at this person? It doesn't right. matter. I mean, I. I mean, I tell that because we have such like just an in and out thing with Mike. A lot of times people ask him stuff and I will literally start shuddering and turn my shoulder and like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm like, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. Because he'd have lit you yeah, up. Yeah, you would have thrown something at me had I yeah. said that, you know, but he just, uh, -uh we're going to, we're going to do whatever. Um, <clears throat> No, I mean, Dion's great for the game. Was, I mean, again, 9 million people watch Colorado, Colorado State. Just the problem is admit that what is coming out of the mouth is marketing and promotion and not all it's not, you know, it's not genuine. I mean, like, stop. Yeah. No, not that none of it's genuine. Right. But, but he wasn't actually personally offended by what Jay Norvell said. 
come on. Yeah. Quit. And Jay Norvell was talking to his team. He was. Dan Lanning talks to his Just team. Just like Dion talks to his team. Yeah. Dion is putting a chip on his team's shoulder, which they need because they're not talented enough otherwise. So let's. Yeah. He'll have them geared up for SC on Saturday. Might not be, not be enough, but. Yeah. They need Caleb not to make the trip. Yeah, that's the problem. Is there's a there's a talent. Yeah, usually, what you when you watch that stuff, even with Lane. I mean, Lane's talking to his team. I'm sure a lot of what Pittman was saying yesterday was for the benefit of his team. You know, pushing over the NFL, we'll do plenty of college throughout the week. What time is SC Colorado? By the way. Is it a night game or is it a two thirty game? I think it's a two thirty game, but I'm not positive. Okay, Colorado's not ranked anymore, so it's not. It didn't make the sheet. Okay, everything else does. By the way, <laughs> uh, Ole Miss Arkansas six thirty in two weeks um, for that game. SEC I was a little Network. surprised. I, I was expecting eleven uh, to the I'd, point that I wasn't even necessarily thinking about it. If I'd I'm been honest. counting on eleven. <laughs> I mean, I thought for sure it would be eleven. Yeah, I was. I, I kind of opened it and went, huh. Okay, well, that's 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 interesting enough. Um, I was looking for the rest of the times. Do you have those up? I may have them somewhere. Hold on. Uh, I can find them. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But... Here we go. Got it. All right, games that week. LSU-Missouri is the 11 o'clock game. That is in Columbia. Western Michigan-Mississippi State is at 11 on SEC Network. Alabama-Texas A&M, the 230 game on SEC, on the CBS, sorry. Um, Ole Miss, Arkansas, 6.30 SEC Network, Kentucky at Georgia, 6 o'clock ESPN, and Florida hosting Vanderbilt at 3 o'clock on SEC Network. Mm. Those are your times for October the 7th, week before Ole Miss's bye week there. Um, there's, there's a joke about the SEC Network doing the Arkansas Ole Miss game again, but I'm sure, that, I'm sure that won't be a topic of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Actually, probably won't be a topic of conversation. On the board? In general. Okay. Because next week, people are either going to be well, that's a good point. sky high. There's other things going or on. Or really pissed off. Yeah. We got a lot of other stuff going on, as yeah. Boulder would say right now. We're not <laughs> we're not to that right now. Yeah. Uh, Derek Carr, AC joint separation, saying week to week. However, he's not been ruled out for the Buccaneers this week. Saints got to fix that offensive line, dude. They say even like Ramchick's bad, like the whole group. They're I paying mean, Ramchick and Cesar Ruiz a ton of money, and it's not not going well right now. Um, Sunday is funny, and it's what's interesting about sports because I've been very consistent that this is probably a team that wins a division, but I mean, assuming Carr is healthy. Um, but not a team that can win the Super Bowl. I mean, someone's got to win the division. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. why not? Why not right. us? Um, I mean, I was talking to this might have been Ben Gary a couple of days ago, and I said, you know, they're they're destined for like a three or four seed. You host that game while knowing they have other than maybe like one win, they have no chance of getting through. Like this is not a make the tournament situation. It does not feel like for the Saints. Yet Sunday for a regular season game in September almost was like debilitating because you're up 17, mm nothing -hmm. to the point that I had sort of turned the page. Like the Packers couldn't do anything offensively. Jordan love looked awful. They're up 17, nothing. And I'm kind of going, it's going into the fourth quarter, 17, nothing. And you kind of go, Hey, they can separate a little here. The, the uh, Falcons are having a hard time with the lions. Bucks got the Eagles tomorrow. Yeah. You got the bucks next week. Like I'm kind of doing the math in my head and going, Hey, this thing might be over by like mid November here. Like, you know, even with the saints not being very good. I mean, it's just kind of the way the division works out. And then because I've seen a lot of stuff over the course of my life, when the, when the Packers cut it to 17 to 11 and then Carr gets hurt and my mind is more on Carr, but at the same time you go, Oh, this ain't good. Like I see where this, I, I see where this story said I've seen this car crash before. Um, it, I had in my head that Carr was basically out for the season, that Jameis was, again, the quarterback. And I was basically just transported back to last season. I went, well, that's last year's team. They suck. Like, we're as mediocre as possible. Like I, And then when they kick the they, – they, so they go up. The, Jordan Love goes down, does the drive, did a hell of a job. Gets the good Saints defense. Let's settle, though. And then the rookie kicker misses the field goal, hooks it. And I kind of just sat there like – 
45 minutes ago, the division was over by mid-November, and we were kind of rolling. And right now, my quarterback is over here on a stretcher, basically. Yeah. They lose this game. The kicker doesn't hit what in the NFL should be a 92% kick. Like, it it all kind of came tumbling down yeah. in an afternoon right there where I went, okay, I'm done. Like, forget it. I'm, I'm out. I'm just... I'm disassociating for a little while now. It's over. I watch Devin Snow every Monday when he does the red beans and rice yeah, thing. Yeah. I don't know why. I just thoroughly enjoy those six minutes. But he, he started it with, you know, it's like the whole city's in mourning today. <laughs> it's like because they lost a game on Sunday. The whole city's in mourning. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you just got to get some red beans to get that out of your system. If you get red beans in your system, you don't think about that anymore. But the whole everybody's in mourning, and I was like, "It's September." No, 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 no. It had a feel. It, yeah, it had a feel. That happens. I mean, as Kevin and the thread said, I was there. Chase Packers fans around me thought they had a chance with Winston in there. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I want to like him. I, I, I so want to like him. God, he looks the part. What's my point? Like you look at it and you go, "God, he got an arm." I mean, I, oh, know. just got a. Can. And at times, it's like. Hold on real quick, by the way. Hold on. And I, I know we got to go to break in a second. Lane, I love you, but we compared Jalen Milrow to Michael Vick yeah. yesterday. <laughs> hold on a minute. Hold on. <laughs> you saw what I wrote. Yeah, he said that, and I went, hold, whoa, 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 Jaylen whoa, Jalen Milrow whoa. would kill. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Jalen, but I'm going to assume that he would kill. Elusiveness, to- arm, yeah. any any yeah. any attribute yeah. other than humane treatment of dogs to Michael Vick. Like it, yeah. Vick it, could throw it 80 yards. I don't think Jalen can. Yeah, I went, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of wonder if Lane wants that one back. Like you said, it went, eh. No question. I think he's, I think he's forced himself to move on. But yes, I think, I, I think that will forever be a game in his mind that sticks out. Yeah. Uh, also, by the way, real quick, uh, I was an idiot. Buck Halter plays for UAB now. So um, he's not even on the roster. So, yes, Lane would not mention him yesterday in a uh, possibility of wide receivers who could be participating. But the point holds. And they've, us, signed yeah, a, yeah. they've signed a lot of young wide receivers, and they've not gotten much out of them. Yeah. Which is – it's it's worth noting at some point, right? He's in year four. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think you have to start looking at what they've what they've done and what they haven't done and talk – and if you're them, you, you've got to have that self-evaluation at the end of every season where you go, hey – what is it about either our, our our wide receiver evaluation or our wide receiver development that He's is lacking us here? Right, right, yeah. Because something's something's lacking. Yeah. Podcast brought to you by the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation. Season single game tickets on sale now for football that includes LSU uh, this uh, this weekend. You can get those at OleMissTicks.com. And remember, tickets available for uh, the Tad Pad game. Old Miss headed back to Tad Smith Coliseum for men's basketball this November. They got VIP packages, tons of great options there for that game. It's not going to be streamed anywhere. It's not on TV. You can only see it if you're inside Tad Smith Coliseum. So that's OleMissTicks.com, as is uh, time for season tickets. You still um, have an opportunity to get those as well. Get same seat for every game. Priority to order his seat tournament and postseason tickets. Eligible to renew next year and choose your seats before the general public. And you earn priority points and seating allo- parking and seating allocations as well. So for all those tickets information, again, that is OleMissTicks.com. Brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis, 901-494-3387. Just give him a text or a call. Send him an email at jedwards at regencytravel.net. And uh, tell him what you're thinking about. Give him some parameters and a budget. He's going to really take care of you. He's great at what he does. Uh, the holiday season coming up, if you're thinking about a uh, company dinner, a Christmas party, that kind of thing, think about OPA, Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square. It's a perfect place to host one of those kinds of events. Fabulous food, great craft libations that can accommodate up to 200 guests. Contact Jeannie at 601-421-7147. We'll have picks on Thursday. They're brought to you by Service Specialist. If your company is looking to find quality, hard-to-find talent, service specialists can help. Keep in mind, payment of service is solely contingent on if you decide to hire a candidate that they send. you got nothing to lose. Give Will, Sidney, or Kelsey a call at 662-832-5138 or uh, their new and improved website, service specialist, ltd.com. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Uh, Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures 
that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. Check them out at CorinthDental.com. If you're a uh, displaced corporate executive wanting to put your career in your own hands, maybe you're an experienced entrepreneur looking to diversify, Andy Ludicky can help. He owns multiple franchises and businesses. He uses his expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. It's uh, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Southern Traditions Farm is a 68-acre, 32-stall, upscale equestrian training and boarding facility in Canton, Mississippi. Uh, Everything from horse riding lessons to uh, events, it can all happen there at Southern Traditions. Beautiful facilities. Get in touch with them on Facebook or Instagram at Southern Traditions Farm. Would you like some peace of mind knowing that your roof is taken care of? Whether you need a new inspection, a new roof, or a maintenance program, Riverland Roofing has you covered. Home or business, they're licensed and insured. They can service Mississippi and the surrounding states. So text or call them today at 662-644-4297. And are you ready for the ultimate college experience? Welcome to College Town Oxford, your new home away from home. Uh, They know you want the best. That's exactly what they offer. No more long commutes or missing out on campus events at Ole Miss. College Town Oxford's right next door to campus with spacious two, three, four, and five bedroom cottages, each with individual leases because they believe in flexibility and simplicity. Don't break up the gang. Instead, grab your friends, pick out your favorite floor plan, floor plan, and reserve it today at collegetownoxford.com. Text their VIP list today to be the first to know when they're leasing for the fall of 2024 is open, 662-300-3733. Podcast is brought to you by Johnson Hill Creamery, johnstillcreamery.com. Tailgate packages for LSU this weekend or really any game. You can order right there on the website at johnstillcreamery.com. You pick it up at Chicory Market. You specify the game you're ordering for. And when you'd like to pick it up on Friday or Saturday, you can do either one to make it convenient for you. They feed 10, 20, or 40. They have tons of great options, including the charcuterie trays, their uh, artisanal cheese trays, make their cheeses locally. In Oxford, all the uh, time they got the crew to tell you, the assorted cookies and brownies, desserts, the cheesecake dip, it's a fan favorite, and much more. To see their full offerings at johnstillcreamery.com and to place your order there for a tailgate this weekend and throughout the season, johnstillcreamery.com. Podcast also brought to you by Heavenly Sunshine. With Heavenly Sunshine, it's time to put up, or at least get everything in order to put up Christmas lights. Don't put your Christmas lights up yet. It's only September 26th. Not quite time, but you can get ready. And if you do it in the month of September, they're going to help you out. Use code MPW10, and when you do that, you get a free 30-inch lighted deluxe wreath from Heavenly Sunshine. They use commercial-grade LEDs and are customizable to your home or business. They take care of the lights while you take care of the gifts, and they offer a full-service installation plan. They'll install, take down, they even store the lights for you. You don't have to worry about it. They just go up when they're supposed to, come down when they're supposed to, and they handle the storage. They've been serving Oxford for over four decades commercial residential property maintenance, power washing, soft wash roof cleaning, and much more. That's heavenlysunshine.com or 662-342-1203. NFL-wise, Bengals knocked off the Rams 1916 last night to avoid an 0-3 start. Burrow woo, did not look good. Um, looked better. Got hit a little bit. Hit got a, hit a lot. Yeah, got hit a lot. Um, Stafford got hit a ton. Yeah. B- Bengals played really well on defense. They did. Our- Aaron Donald's a handful. Stafford 0, and f- 0 for 5, I think, in the red zone last night. Just could not punch it in. They had some opportunities, especially right there, I guess, early third quarter or something like that, um, and just couldn't quite get it done. And then uh, Bengals the Eagles. Fi- Bengals finally got Jamar Chase involved. That was that was huge. Yeah. And the Eagles uh, knocked off the Bucks 25-11. Eagles 3-0 and and have not looked like they've played overly that well, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but. They're pretty solid. Oh, they're good. Yeah. They'll be they'll be in the mix for sure. An NFC that looks kind of yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. Cowboys banged up now. You don't believe in it. Not at all. It's Niners, Eagles, and then it's wide open for somebody. I guess the Lions, maybe, but they just don't feel like they're kind of there. But it's early. NFL's super early. You judge NFL after three weeks, and you're you're really rolling the dice. Fan merchandise company Fanatics says that uh, a jersey jumped 400% in sales yesterday. Let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess it's not Tua Tungavaloa. It I'll, is I'll, not Tua. I will go with uh, Travis Kelsey. That is, that is, that is correct. Um, yes. 
I would love to know how many people bought custom Chiefs jersey with Swift on the back. Oh, yesterday. Because I bet it's not a zero. Probably not. Look, I have no idea what their relationship is or isn't. I will say that <laughs> even if they are nothing more than friendly, it's been one hell of a marketing strategy the last week. If you just went, hey, well, you know what? Let's just, just walk around for a minute. Yeah. Because Jason's having fun with it. He's like letting out the news and all this stuff. Like it. Have they talked about it on their podcast yet? Not that I have seen. Okay. I don't listen, but I see a good bit of it on social media. I I listen occasionally. Okay. I like I like it. Some Is of, he likable on the podcast? Who? Travis. Yeah, they both are. Okay. I like Jason a lot. Yeah. I don't I for whatever reason I have not been as attuned to learning much about Travis. Yeah, he's he's very likable. He's the little brother. He always jokes about how Jason's better at everything. It it it, it what? kind of encap- encapsulates 2023 for us doesn't it like yeah. it's just sort of it's got hey. a, it's got a weird it's, all of it has a really weird feel to it because something doesn't quite feel right right yeah even the convertible leave like it just it feels you're making it too something it feels orchestrated it feels like a joke it feels orchestrated yeah all right he did a commercial that came out this past week that has drawn a ton of attention. Yeah. There are rumors about how much he was paid to do that commercial. And then he begins to date. A pop culture icon. An absolute icon. One of the probably five most uh, recognizable people on earth. It's just it's interesting. <clears throat> It's interesting. I'm. I'm not saying. Interesting's the word. If no. they have, if they have found love in one another, then no, congratulations. No, no awesome. If they live ha- happily ever after, that's fantastic. Congratulations to both of them. But this started as a joke where he was trying to meet her at a concert and wasn't able to. Had wristbands made for her or a, something. A friendship bracelet, basically. Yes. Yeah. And didn't work out. And then he invited her to Kansas City. She was. Very much seen in the box with Donna Kelsey, the mother. Oh, very much. On Sunday. I mean, it was a big part of the... It was the only thing that kept people in that broadcast because... The, they were beating the hell out of the I Bears. I think they were ahead of the Bears 704 to nothing <laughs> at one point. Yeah. Um, boy, the Bears. <sighs> they saw it. Whoa. Wow. It just doesn't feel... Um, it doesn't feel right. Feels orchestrated. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. They did an episode recently where uh, Jason's wife was the guest on the show, and Travis very openly admitted that he would like to have that domesticated life. Did he? You know, married and children and all of that. Yeah, sure. So maybe, maybe he'll find it. You know. So you're not buying? Not, not much. Not, not really. It just, but look, I mean, everybody's gonna make a bunch. Everybody's gonna make a buck off of it. Oh, but well, he made the rumor is he made a lot of bucks. Yeah, financially, he's had a hell of a week. Had a good week between that and Taylor. Speaking of uh, stories between people around programs and pro- prominent players on the quarterback, see what Joe Namath did to Zach Wilson yesterday. He took his, his quotes. Took his job. Well, he probably could. Yeah, I mean. Zach Wilson not exactly been great there for the Jets since the injury to uh, Aaron Rodgers. You know, Namath has clearly had his own share of whatever, and he's more than willing to talk. But having a Hall of Famer criticize your job the day after is probably not also the thing that you need going on if you're Zach Wilson. Um, He was on a radio interview. I don't know who with yesterday. ESPN New York radio is all it says. The Michael K. Show, sorry. Okay. I didn't take anything positive out of it, referring to Wilson's stars to this point. Um, let's see. It was awful. You sit down, you sit down on a play, you go right down. What happened? I thought you're trying to win and make plays. You quit on a play. What is going on? It's disgusting. I wouldn't keep him. I've seen absolutely enough of Zach Wilson. Yeah, I have no problem with any of that. Yeah. He did. He, he quit on a play in a one, in a one score game. These guys aren't picking the right players. Just, just 
referencing the president and GM. Um, they aren't doing a good job of coaching. It's evident. I mean, you got to go look and see. If you have an eye for football at all, you see things are haywire. It's too crazy. They need to fix it, and that's getting rid of a lot of people and bringing new ones in. They need to make major changes from top to bottom. Um, I don't know. They went. They, 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 they lost rolled their quarterback. The, they rolled the dice on Aaron Rodgers, Joe, and he got hurt on the first series of the first game. You don't really plan for that. Head coach says you just don't throw people away, man. It's not the reason we lost on Sunday, referring to Wilson. I'm sure they're looking for a quarterback. The rumor that's out there that's really interesting is Kirk Cousins. Matt Ryan said he was not interested in suiting back up for the New York Jets. Yeah. The internet did get a little haywire this morning because we had a Matt Ryan that signed a deal with the Minnesota Timberwolves, um, a basketball player, and they confused people for a minute. Oh. So Matt Ryan went, oh, no, never mind. That's some two-way guy that plays for the T-Wolves. If you're Minnesota, do you bail on the season at 0-3? Do you, do you bail and go, hey? Look, you were, it was always never going to be last year. No. It was never going to be last year. Last year was your chance. You had a chance to kind of capture the magic, and you got close. Made the playoffs and they lost to the Giants. And that was, they probably should have said, you know what, that's probably a sign. But it's always hard to do that, to move on and tell your fan base that, hey, a season's over in September. Now, here's the thing, though. The only reason why I say no, I like the Lions. I know they lost, I know they're two and one. They, they're not undefeated, but I like them. Mm -hmm. The Packers are not great. No, not at all. And the Bears, and the Bears are Bears suck. abysmal. So, yeah, no, you, and, and, and like you said, I mean, the NFC is just, a collection of blah outside of two teams. Eagles and 49ers. That's it. Nobody else Nobody else blows you away. I mean, I watched the Rams last night. No. And it's not. Uh, Seattle's not. Uh, Phoenix is uh, – Arizona's abysmal. Um, they won Sunday. They did. We, we talked about the, the South already. We talked about the North, the East, and the Giants are not good. And without Saquon, they're, they're not competitive. The Commanders aren't there. We talked about the Cowboys and the Eagles. I mean, yeah, the NFC is wide open. Mm -hmm. If anybody just wants to go grab it. You have any love? No. Okay. Cubs at Braves tonight. What are you uh, What are you expecting? Pain. Pain. Emotional pain. I'm kind of, I'm actually so braced for the emotional pain that I don't think I'll even feel it. TBS, 620 first pitch. Cubs, 82 and 74. Braves, 156. Who's pitching tonight? It's Justin Steele. Mm, let's see if I can find He's out. been terrible his last two starts. Justin like, Steele versus Bryce Elder tonight in this game. Oh, Elder will kill him. Elder 12 and 4 with a 363 ERA. Steele hit the wall. I, I don't think he's ever thrown this many pitches, this many games, many innings. He's been great all year. Cody Bellinger leads the Cubs in every offensive category. Yeah. Home runs, batting average, RBIs, OPS. The question with Bellinger is, is this his last week as a Cub? And if it is, it was a hell of a year. Sayonara. And I'd, I'd love for them to re-sign him. I just don't know how you do that. Last time they played, Cubs took two out of three. They did. That was in early August. Cubs were playing really well. Got Over hammered in game one and came back yeah. and won the series. The, the, the Braves hammered. Kyle Hendricks. The Braves have a three-game lead, I think, over the Dodgers with six to go. Is that right? I think that's correct. Yeah, I think. The magic number for the Braves to clinch best record in baseball for World Series and against the Dodgers for NL home field is three, I believe, in both because they beat the Orioles two out of three in Atlanta and they have the tiebreaker over the Dodgers. So I think their magic number is three with six to go. So they still are playing for something. I know. They, my, my hope all along was that they would not be playing for anything. They put it in neutral and and that and they appear to have kind of put it in neutral. Yeah, they have. So maybe they're not playing very well, frankly. I just Yeah, I know. Would try to take two. Yeah. I if if you offered me two right now, I'd jump at it. Yeah. The Cubs don't own the tiebreaker over the Marlins, I don't think. I know they don't over the Diamondbacks. And they don't own it over the Reds, although the Reds are two and a half. That's back. over. It's close to over. The Reds have hit the wall, I think. I don't know. It'd be a fun week. I I don't look forward to sitting in Vaught Hemingway on Saturday night trying to trying to do my job while also agonizing over the Brewers Cubs game, and I, that will absolutely happen. So, yeah, fun week ahead for Mister uh, McCready. Austin, thank you for the uh, super chat. Have y'all seen the lawsuit from the native 
American tribe against the commanders. They're pushing for the name to be changed back to the Redskins. No, I have not seen that. Good luck. Yeah. I, that would, they don't have the ability to that do that. That would stun me. Yeah. The backlash that they would, they no. would take is that's not happening. So. Pr- frankly, not worth it. No. All right. More college football news tomorrow. Um, players available today. No Kiffin until SEC teleconference tomorrow around noon for that. So uh, we'll find stuff. Talk to you tomorrow. Rebelgrove.com in the meantime. Talk to you then.